Let's examine problem 6-3-A, CVP analysis with some what-if analysis. So because we've broken our costs into variable and fixed components, it enables us to sort of test things out. Say, what if I made this change? What would my income statement look like then? And so that's what we'll be doing in this problem after we do some break-even calculations. Hue and Zinc's projected contribution format income statement for the upcoming year is shown below. And we can see the income statement there. Now, uh, I always like to do per unit as well as percentages. So $2 million and we're selling 10,000 units, $2 million divided by 10,000 units means our price is $200 a unit. Our variable expense is uh, 14 hundred no 14 1.4 million rather divided by 10,000 units it's 140 dollars a unit and you can see it's going to be 60 dollars a unit here let me make that 200 even clearer okay as percentages we set everything as a percentage of sales this is a hundred percent two million divided by two million 1.4 million divided by two million is 70 and 600,000 divided by two million is 30 percent so question didn't ask for it but you know it's implied there with those blank spaces it says compute the break-even point in units hopefully you've got this memorized by now but if you don't there is a formula sheet at the start of the chapter and this is the key formula probably the key formula of the whole chapter break-even point in units is fixed expenses divided by contribution margin per unit our company's fixed expenses four hundred and eighty thousand dollars our contribution margin per unit 60. Okay, so $480,000 divided by 60 means we need to sell 8,000 units if we wish to break even. Our break even point in units is 8,000 units. And I'll just prove that right now. You don't have to do this as was an asked, but break even point in units is the point at which profit is at zero. So if I sold 8,000 units, that's 1.6 million, 8,000 times 200. 8,000 times 140 is our variable cost, 1120, 1120, sales uh, minus variable expenses, 1600, minus 1120, is 480. That's our contribution margin. And look at that, our fixed expenses are 480. Our profit, therefore, is zero. So I uh, just wanted to prove that at 8,000 units, we were breaking even, we weren't making any profit, we weren't making any loss. What's the break even point in dollars? Should be pretty easy here. Uh, we sell at $200 a unit, we need to sell 8,000 units to break even. I just did it, it's 1.6 million would be our break even point in dollars. And that's just 8,000 units times 200 bucks a unit. C. If the company wishes to earn a target operating income of $300,000, how many units must be sold? Uh, okay, well, let's see. We're gonna use this formula, our fixed expenses, and our fixed expenses were 480, plus target income, our target income was 300, divided by CM per unit, and CM per unit was 60. So 480,000 plus 300,000, 780 divided by 60, 13,000 units. So let's remind ourselves what that means. It means, of course, we're not in this business to break even. We have goals and our goal is to make 300 grand. If I wanna make $300,000, I've gotta sell 13,000 units in order to do so. And you can see that's higher than what I'm expecting to sell, I'm expecting to sell 10,000 units. So I need a 30% uplift in my sales if I wanna hit my goal of making $300,000. Compute the margin of safety. The margin of safety is budget sales minus break-even sales divided by budget sales. Here's the formula. And so it's just our plan sales, which were I think $2 million minus our break-even sales, which I'm going off memory here, 1.6 million divided by budgeted sales, oops, 2 million. Let's just make sure I've got those numbers right. Yes, 2 million is the budget sales, 1.6 is our break-even sales in dollars. So 
2 million minus 1.6 million, 400,000, of course this was in brackets, divided by 2 million, 20%. Now, what the heck does that mean? It's a percentage. So the margin of safety is a percentage and it's 20%. It means if I miss my sales target by 20%, if I'm 20% worse than I projected, I'm still okay. I'm still going to break even. That's the how much wiggle room I have, right? To be wrong. It's our margin of safety. It's how safe we are. Our projections can be wrong by 20% and we'll still be breaking even. We won't be losing money. Okay. So that was the first part. And those were all just calculations we learned in problem like 6.1 and 6.2. Uh, what we add to it is just, we are going to redo our income statement a couple of different ways because having variable and fixed expenses split out allows us to like, Oh, what if this happened? What if that happened? So the E and F here are the what if parts. It says the company's manager thinks that increasing advertising by $150,000, that's a fixed expense, will increase sales by $250,000. If he's correct, what's the dollar advantage or disadvantage of making the change? All right, a few ways to do it. I'll tell you the way I would do it, but and then I'll show you a quicker way. The way I would do this is I'd go, well, how many units are we gonna sell? What's the increase in sales in units? Well, if we're increasing sales and revenue by 250 and we're still selling for 200 bucks a unit, he's saying, I can add 1,250 units to the sales. So then the old sales were 10,000, the new sales are at 11,250 units. Then I just redo the income statement at 11,250 units. And I keep in mind my fixed costs are going up by 150 K. So let's, let's do that. Uh, so if I know I'm selling 11,250 units times by $200 a unit, it means my new sales are 2,250,000. And of course that's an increase of $250,000 as projected. Our variable expenses, 140 times 11,250. 1575000 minus 1575000 means we're making $675,000 in contribution margin. What about our fixed expenses? Our fixed expenses were 480 and we're saying they're going up by 150. So 480 plus 150 is 630. So our new uh, fixed expenses are 630, 675 minus 630, $45,000. Well, you can see we're worse off if we do this, right? If we just stick to the plan, we're thinking we'll make 120. If we follow this person's plan and everything goes perfectly, we're making 45 grand. It's a bad idea. We're going to make less money. How much less? 120 minus 45,000, $75,000 worse off. So we would say there's a disadvantage. Dis advantage of $75,000. Don't do it. Okay, so that is my answer for E. Now I'd said there's a shorter way to do this and there is. The way I might do, actually I would do the income statement, that's the way my brain operates, but you could do it much more simply than that. You could go, okay, if sales go up by 250, CM is going to go up by 250 times the CM ratio times that 30%. So 250 times 0.3, CM goes up by $75,000. And if, if CM goes up by $75,000 and at the same time, fixed expenses go up by, what is it, uh, 150. So fixed expenses go up by 150. So my contribution goes up by 75, fixed expenses go up by 150. You can see like contribution margin is good, fixed expenses is bad. Well, the, the bad outweighs the good by $75,000, right? That's uh, you know a quick way to do it. And again, if I were doing this by in my head, I wouldn't even write it all out. I'd just go, oh yeah, we are gonna be 75 grand worse off. Okay, last one. Uh, part F, refer to the original data. Uh, the company's manager believes that it is slight, using a slightly cheaper direct material will decrease variable expenses per unit by 10%, uh, and it will reduce units sold 
by 5%. So if we use a cheaper direct material, our costs are going to go down, but we will sell a bit less because, you know, customers might be turned off by the cheaper material. If he's correct, what's the dollar advantage or disadvantage of making the change? So we're going to drop our variable expenses by 10% and we're going to drop our uh, units sold by 5%. Okay, so make a new income statement. What's my u new unit sold? So we're starting from, again, it says refer to the original data. So starting from 10,000, not 11,250. So 10,000, I'm going to drop my sales and units by 500. So it's going to be 9,500 units, right? A reduction of 5%. My price doesn't change. So my sales is uh, 200 times 9,500, 200 times 9,500, 1.9 million. And again, that's sales of uh, $200 a unit. And my variable expenses, those do drop by 10%. They go from 140 down by 10%. So 140 times 0.1, they go down by $14 uh, a unit. So down to what is that 126 right 140 minus 14 126 and i'm selling 9500 units so times 9500 so it's 1 comma 197 comma 000 sales minus variable expenses equals contribution margin So I'm at 703,000. Okay, on to our fixed expenses. Our fixed expenses do not change. So they were 480, they are still 480. And that brings us down to our new net operating income or income before tax. And there is no tax in this question. So 703 minus 480 is 223 thousand dollars so that compares quite favorably to our old operating income of 120 to 223 we have an advantage it looks like we're a hundred and three thousand dollars apart right 223 minus 120 yeah it's a hundred and three thousand dollars if we make this change and if all the things that this person's saying come to pass we will be at an advantage of $103,000, so do it, <laughs> would be our feedback here. Now, again, a million other variables exist in these what ifs, like what if there's an internet campaign saying, hey, they changed to a sucky material and we don't like the product and maybe our sales drop by more than 5%, that's possible. There's a lot of things that could happen, but just on the numbers, we would say do it. Now there's qualitative factors have to be considered. They're not considered here, but one would absolutely have to think about that, you know, changing the machining, buying a new material, maybe it's a new supplier. There's a lot of things that you'd have to consider. And there's one last thing for you to consider, hit the thumbs up on the way out. Well, at least I hope you'll consider it. All right. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye for now. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.